Hey, Marley. Has it been a week already? I know. It's been so fast. Awesome. Well, uh, there's, there, were, there were far more than eight people who watched last week, so we decided to do it again. Thank um, God. So thank you for everybody who watched. Um, I heard you're going to be negative this week, so drop some, drop some news on me. It's not negative because, you know, you never know what's going to happen, right? Well, the positive thing is that our showings are right on track for what they were in January, which they were pretty good, 2,000 showings. Um, one thing that I did notice is that our inventory is dropping very quickly. Um, we peaked in October at 1.8, and now we are all the way down to 1.2 months worth of inventory. Um, with new listings and um, you know closings happening, I, I don't think that we're going to see 1.5 months of inventory by the end of this month. Um, I do think that we're going to be dropping into what we were in the last two years, which is two weeks worth of inventory. So that is something that we are kind of nervous about. So you said the 2000 showings of January was kind of good, but if I look at the first week of February from last year, it was 1,000 in one week. Yeah. We had 500 this week, right? So we had half as many showings in the first week of February this year as the first week of February last year, right? Yep. I just want to maintain my reputation here. <laughs> and then we had... So, so we had so we had ninety six closed homes in January in Mount Pleasant. That was the lowest level since when? February two thousand and twelve. That's that's like a long time. That's like eleven years. Yeah, I know. Okay. And then, so and then our pendings were up thirty percent compared to December, which is good, but down eighteen yeah. percent year over year from twenty two. Not terrible, eighteen percent. No, we know this. So. Um, Here's what I noticed anecdotally, and tell me what you're seeing. So, like, I don't know if people, people who are at home who don't know the area, Sullivan's Island is a very expensive little area, a beach area of the whole Charleston, greater Charleston area. I noticed that there are a bunch of listings there, strangely. Um, but they're obviously, like, the cheapest house is, like, $2 million, and a lot of eight, five, eight, nine, ten million million houses, whatever, $3 million. Um, but I see a lot of them reducing their prices. And so... Are we seeing a different behavior at the top end of the market versus the middle and the bottom end of the market in terms of inventory? Have you noticed any of those trends or any data on that? I have seen that we're getting a lot more, you know, bigger, higher end homes hit the market. Obviously, our sweet spot is something that's right underneath the median sales price is what, you know, that's getting swept under because, or swept up. Because uh, I'm still seeing like under, you know, 750 is going insane. Yeah. Um, the showings are going crazy, multiple offers. Um, it's just really anything that's going to be either a jumbo loan or, you know, three, four, five million dollars that's sitting there compared to when the end of 2020, when we were selling, I, I think it was, we were selling like 300% more million dollar homes than we've ever done before by the end of 2020. So yeah, yeah I mean, my, our average season yeah. market is 33 days right now. My, my thought process is, you know, if you're a first time home buyer and it's rent versus own, easier to justify buying at a higher monthly payment with the rates being higher. Um, it, and if you're not selling a lower interest rate that you already own on, easier just by getting into this market. Or if you're, you know, you're towards your retirement years and you want to downsize, so you're looking at that lower price range, you can justify you know, the higher monthly payments of that, assuming that you think rates are going to come down. Where I still right. think it's going to be really hard for people to justify is if you own that million dollar house with a $700,000 mortgage that you're paying 3% on to go buy a $3 million house right now and pay 5.5% with a $2.5 million mortgage, your payments are talking about going from $6,000 a month to $30,000, $30,000 a month. And I think that's the jump that when really, rates were really low, you could see people making because it didn't seem like it was that far away in terms of your monthly outlay, and now it seems incredibly far away. Yeah, um, what I'm telling everyone right now, what's that? Oh, go ahead. Um, I just had a client that we looked at. Um, a, it was a house in the ADU, and we were talking about you know potential month-to-month -month rentals, long-term rentals, all that stuff. And I was letting her know, I was like, listen, our inventory is – like almost half of what we had in October, which we thought we were going to be in this market and we got really excited, but that market's over and now we're in a different market. 
So I'm like, if you purchase this house, if you even just wait, like if, like if we close in April on this home, which is when the owners wanted to close, I was like, if the market is still going to where it looks like it's going now, which is no inventory, well, for, like with that interest rate, people are going to be forced to rent again. So I was like, right now you could, you know, rent this home for about 3700 but we don't know what you could rent it for in, you know, April, May, June, sure. if it continues to stay like this, because we've been talking like the people that are going to list this month or this year, it's going to be a forced list, like divorces, you're uncomfortably in a small home, you're in a way like your home's way too big, or you have to move away for work or something like that. Those are the only people that I think will be listing their home this year. Well, uh, so I don't make predictions, but I, and you can tease this. When you post this video mm -hmm. online, I want you to make it. Mark makes a prediction, okay? For you guys who are watching, the jobs numbers came out this week. We added 500,000 jobs, lowest unemployment, blah, blah, blah. As I really dig into the numbers, a lot of those are revisions, part-time work, part-time added jobs over the last 12 months. Also saw some data that came out this week that was 64% of Americans cannot afford a $1,000 emergency, highest number on record. Even scarier than that, 50% of respondents making six figures or more so that they don't think that they can afford a thousand dollar emergency. So, Hey, you think you've wow. made it, you're making six figures, living paycheck to paycheck. Half of those people can't afford a thousand dollar emergency. And so while we keep getting this positive data, positive, positive, like everything's coming out, the jobs, everything, I actually think this is all kind of a false narrative before the storm. I don't think we can sustain seeing savings rates are at, close to all time lows, going back way lower than they were pre pandemic. Uh, and on a straight line down, we're seeing people struggling and not having that, that backup if they have an emergency. And now you're seeing layoffs across of these big industries like tech and other places. There is, there is a going to be a cumulative reckoning of that at some point. I think it will be sooner rather than later. That's my prediction. What do you think? Uh, what, when you were talking about that, how they don't, there's not a thousand dollar emergency budget what if these people go through you know the two-year tax assessment and now have an additional 100 to 500 dollars a month additional added to their taxes which is something that we've never really had to worry about because our property taxes have always been so low but you know we've seen a price appreciation at 25 to 35 percent the last three years so. well, how many of those people those 500,000 jobs are people that got a second job right now or something else they'll pay the bills because their inflation is causing them to not be able to get by with that one single job. You know, and depending where you live in this country, it's not a surprise to me that $100,000 isn't enough. Um, and so I'm not surprised by those numbers either. And so we're entering a very different space with this. Um, and it's been growth, 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 spends of that inflation. With the rates being higher and those other forces coming at play, at some point, those job numbers are going to turn around. And if someone loses their job, especially in a specific field, if you lose your job in mortgages right now, there's nowhere to go right now. Like there's, there's nobody hiring in our space. In fact, I just saw some numbers recently that we still have 30% more people employed in mortgage right now than we did in 2019, yet we're doing less mortgages right now than we were doing in 2019. And so there's a lot more room to go. And those people are going to hit the job market, either going to have to retool, change industries, do different things. And I think a lot of industries you're seeing those layoffs coming through in those headlines, it's going to catch up. And so, um, you know, to your point of forced listings, right? You know, those are the people that are going to be listing because you lose your job, you got to move to find a new job, you, you know, you get relocated somewhere else, you're finding a new industry, need that financial flexibility. And by the way, you bought your house three years ago, you have all this equity. And so it is kind of a get out of jail free card. If you can bail yourself out on that right now, um, I do think you're going to see a lot of people go that route. Um, I know it's not popular news or happy news, but it, it is, I think, the storm that's coming. Well, on a positive note, those people that are going to have to get a forced listing, they're going to get a shit ton for their house. I don't care what the interest rates are. There's going to be no homes, and the buyer demand is going to be there no matter what. So, so right now, good news is if it all goes bad, Marley says you can get a shit ton for your house, especially if you use the Marley Preston Group. So <laughs> I appreciate I mean, your time, Marley. Any final words for anybody before I let you go? No, I don't think so. If y'all have any questions, just reach out to us. I appreciate your time. Crying. Thanks so much. Yeah, see ya.